Testing, one, two. Practitioner Consultant Certification Course, Level 3. Product Development in Formulation in Complementary Alternative Medicine. Introduction. In Level 1, we were introduced to chemical exposure as a possible cause for many of our illnesses. In Level 2, we learn about the therapeutic properties of plant materials used in our practice. Now, in Level 3, we begin to formulate plant-based products as a non-toxic option for better health, care, and maintenance. This is important as we begin to learn how to replace synthetic chemical products with plant-based options. We will learn how to change the quality of the indoor air, which is what our cells breathe, from chemically laced air to a plant-based indoor air environment thereby reducing the toxic chemicals we continuously breathe in through our skin, nose, and mouth. Every product is made up of a product base, which provides the delivery method for the principal or active ingredients. PBCAM practitioner consultants don't have to worry about any of the synthetic chemical interactions associated with petrochemical synthetic blending because plant-based ingredients essential oils and natural bases, when blended together well are without the many unknown and unwanted reactions that relate to and are linked with petrochemicals. This makes things very simple for us. The bases for our formulations are all naturally occurring materials known and used throughout time for their own therapeutic values. The following is a list of product base and the reasons we use them. We have also covered this natural basis in our product preparation blending video, so you can refer to the videos at your leisure for additional information. Earth clays. Let us begin with the material we use as a base in making a toothpaste, acne blend, face and hand foot mask, fungus clay, and in any blend requiring antifungal firming and exfoliating properties. Although any volcanic clay with its benefits can be used in our practice, we use bentonite and or EPK, which is kaolin clay. Bentonite, it is also known as green clay. It is a strong exfoliator, that means it sucks out toxins from the skin. It is not a mineral, it is the commercial name for Montmorillonite, the active ingredients in many medicinal clay. This clay is extra firm and is best when blended with EPK clay, which is a softer clay. The result is a medium to soft clay application. It is used when you want to extract toxins uh, from an area in, in the body. The EPK kaolin clay is also known as China clay because it's originated in China. It is light or white clay. It is known as a milder exfoliator. Mixed by itself to get a creamy texture with deeper penetration. This is the preferred clay for softer application. EPK clay is known to absorb oil with an astringent effect to remove impurities from normal to oily skin. The purest clay is found in any wholesale company catering to the pottery craft trade since the clay for pottery needs to be of the purest food grade form. You can be assured of good quality clay from the supplier. They also have a better price that, a better price that any of the health food stores will have. We will be uh, putting together a list and you'll be able to find this list of suppliers uh, within the area that uh, uh, is the educational area. So all the list of the suppliers will be named there. And there's also other suppliers that we haven't used, which I'm sure they supply very good gray material. You can also check in your own area in town uh, to see if you can find any um, retailers or suppliers of uh, um, clay material or of pottery craft and you're able to find it and get it without paying the shipping cost. 
Then we go into baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Baking soda is a well-known natural deodorant with an abrasive texture. This by itself replaces any talc-based product and can be used for scrubbing in kitchen and bathroom. Knowing that talc that is found in baby powder and many scrubbing powders, if not all of them, is in the list of carcinogens. So we do want to replace anything that is based uh, with talc. Make sure to choose <clears throat> the baking soda that is recommended for baking that has the picture of the cupcakes or the cookies in the cover. Many of the 100% quote-unquote baking sodas are not recommended for baking because they contain bleach. So beware of that. Then we have vegetable glycerin soap. Vegetable glycerin is a clear or cloudy natural vegetable derivative used in soap making that can be easily melted and combined with essential oils for a specific therapeutic product. Example of soap products are pet flea tick soap, acne soap, skincare soap, dandruff soap, hair and body soap, and an alert morning soap. Salt. Rock salt absorbs liquids naturally and is favored for inhalers and as a room fragrant crystal. It is excellent for sinus inhaler, appetite control inhaler, or any synergy or single oil that we choose to deliver via an inhaler. Coarse salt can also be used as a, a saline solution in bath. It can be mixed with an equal part of Epsom salt and 10 to 20 drops of selected essential oils for an effective bath. Cornstarch, or arrowroot powder. Cornstarch can be used as a substitute for talc, for body powders, and it may be sifted to form a finer powder that through a, a sifter, a hand sifter. A few drops of essential oils may be added to uh, for the purpose of the product. It is great as baby powder when mixed with a few drops of lavender or as a base for flea tick powder when mixed with uh, rosemary, which repels ticks, and lavender or eucalyptus that repels fleas. It's an antifungal foot powder uh, when you mix it with a uh, tea tree and more. Beeswax. It's a product of bees activity and is full of therapeutic material. This is the best substitute for petroleum-based products for moisturizing. Beeswax is especially effective for dry skin condition as it is has strong moisturizing qualities. Mix beeswax with unfiltered vegetable oils for a soft, pliable salve at a rate of one part beeswax to eight to nine parts of unfiltered vegetable oils. For a more solid product, such as lip balm, mix one part of beeswax to about seven parts of unfiltered vegetable oil. It is important to know that the above formulation is roughly what is needed. As it dries, if it is too soft for what you're blending, you will need to add more beeswax. Or if it's too hard, you will, uh, uh, you will know to add a more unfiltered vegetable oil. And once again, where to get the unfiltered vegetable oil, and where to get the beeswax will be from a local beekeeper, or there's many places uh, that you can get uh, the beeswax uh, from the internet. Now, how to prepare and clean raw beeswax for product development. This is one of the bases that is not already prepared for us, uh, the beeswax material. This takes preparation, and it takes time, and it takes uh, some equipment. You will need three crock pots. One crock pot to melt the beeswax, the pure beeswax. And that crock pot, you can also use it to seal uh, any of the tops, any of the caps, tops on any of your containers. It makes a beeswax container by uh, closing the, the, the top and just dipping it twice into the beeswax and it will make us a, a very nice safety seal. But let's, uh, let's look at the preparation of beeswax from the raw material. In figure one, you see 25 pounds of raw beeswax, which I um, received from um, a beekeeper, uh, which is uh, 
at G's Dream Farm. You will find them in our supplier. And by the way, they have the best, the best uh, honey. And uh, they don't use any chemicals uh, in their fields. So the honey is uh, with, with no chemicals. And they also have an excellent uh, beeswax. When you choose your beeswax, make sure that the beekeeper don't rent their, fee, uh, their bees to the farmers that use chemicals because you will have chemical residues in your beeswax and you don't want that. So in figure one, we have the raw beeswax with a crock pot. In figure two, we begin to melt the beeswax in a crock pot on high. Now, once the beeswax is melted uh, to the level of the crock pot, that allows us to add some water. Uh, we can add some water, a uh, filter water, uh, to clean the beeswax, as you can see in figure three. Now the, the beeswax is hot and melted. Um, the water here is now hot, that's what you see it cooling. But if you put in hot water, it won't, it won't do that. But if you leave it for a little bit, it will melt with the beeswax. And then you turn off the crock pot and you have to wait a day, 24 hours for it to cool. When it cools, as you can see in figure four, um, you have the clean beeswax on top. And as you can see in figure five, once you remove it to water, because the water allows the beeswax cake to float. That's why you put the water. And all the sediments will come to the bottom. Now the sediments are propolis, which is one of the um, most beneficial properties of bees and very expensive. So when you get and, be, and begin with a raw beeswax um, cake or uh, 25 pounds of it like we did here, you have a lot of propolis, which you can use for your smoothies or for your food and so forth. And to find the properties of propolis, just go ahead and Google propolis. And from what I understand, the present price for propolis is $35 an ounce. And as you will see, you get a lot of propolis from this. And then what you do is the next day, like you see in figure five, uh, you will take the beeswax cake and then you begin to scrape it with a knife, as you see in figure six. Then you repeat the melting of the beeswax, the pouring of the water, and more sediments will fall to the bottom until you get extremely clean a beeswax cake that you see on the figure seven. Now if we look at the color of figure seven and we go and look at the color of the original one, you can see that we did a pretty good job in cleaning it. And then in figure four, what we do is uh, we pour in smaller size mold in order for us to use and uh, figure nine, uh, <clears throat> well, you can make a little man out of it like I did and you know, with a little peace sign. Uh, but that is the beeswax cake on the bottom, and around it is the little cupcake size of beeswax. That makes it easier uh, to work with, because <clears throat> then in figure 10, as you will see, I take four of those little beeswax and melt them. Now I'm ready to begin to add my vegetable oil. So I put the four uh, beeswax, uh, clean um, cupcake size and begin to melt them in a crock pot. In figure 11, you can see them melting. Now, once it's melted, then I add unfiltered vegetable oil. And you have a choice. <clears throat> I like to add uh, safflower, sunflower, which are very inexpensive. These are unfiltered vegetable oil, which do not have, do not rancid. It has a shelf life um, of, of many, many years. And you can get that uh, from the, the supplier from the list of suppliers that we mentioned earlier. So we add unfiltered vegetable oil uh, to the mixture. Uh, usually I begin with uh, one inch of melted beeswax to seven or eight inches of the, of the unfiltered vegetables. And you can mix the, the unfiltered vegetable oil. You can add um, grapeseed, carrot seed vegetable oil. Um, avocado, uh, coconut oil, you can add to it. And you can mix them together, which makes it very nice. Now, in figure, and also you're adding the properties of unfiltered vegetable oil. On figure 14, 
Uh, once you get the right consistency of what you want to make, either soft for uh, 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 applicable uh, a skin a skincare salve for moisturizer it's excellent for the feet for cracked skin it's excellent for uh, cracked lips in the winter time um, or overall moisturizer this is the best moisturizer we can we can have actually I have seen cracked skin uh, repair it's not cracked anymore in 24 hours that's how fast this works you're working with natural basis and natural uh, ingredients here. Now in figure 14 the beeswax base is dry and ready to be used and then all I have to do is either remelt this to make products and use whatever I need and then uh, you know store it again um, and I can do that by just grabbing some of that beeswax we just remember now it's a little softer so I can grab it out of there with a with a soup spoon and I remelt it and then make my products so or and then keep the rest for storage for future product making so let's review again you need three slow cookers are needed to blend your beeswax bases one to melt the beeswax a second one to blend your beeswax and vegetable oil and a third one to take the overflow in case you need more space to adjust the consistency of the beeswax and vegetable oils Blend by adding more vegetable oil or beeswax to achieve the firmness you're striving to attain. For example, you may want a firmer mix for blending lip balm, a softer consistency for skincare application, or a firmer mix for solid perfume. There's a need for three pots if you're going to work with this base. Once you achieve the texture you're looking for, you will have a pot with beeswax only, a pot with your finished beeswax, a vegetable mix, and a third pot with a customized blend that you'll be using. Now let's talk about vegetable oils. And when we talk vegetables, we're talking about filter vegetable oils. Because if we use filter vegetable oil, we only have the product for four or six months before they become rancid. Vegetables are used to dilute essential oils for massage, bath and body oils, suntan oils, skincare blends, beeswax salts, and more. Now, I will point out that if you're making massage blends, which are used right away, um, the unfiltered vegetable oils may stain the sheets. The, uh, uh, the filter ones will not, but they don't have the therapeutic properties. So, you have to make a choice on that one. And because it is a massage blend, it is being used right away. So it's not staying around for six months to become rancid. So that's your choice. The preference vegetable oils for a PB Cam practice are on filter, of course. They have all the therapeutic properties of the plant materials, and they have a longer shelf life than the filter vegetable oils, so your products will not turn rancid, as we mentioned, like filter vegetable oils are known to do. The final is a description of the unfiltered vegetable oils, carrot seed, grape seed, sunflower, and canola that we use in our non-toxic products. Of course, you can choose many other oils, though we're just concentrating on this one, which are the ones that we use the most. Grape seed, cold pressed. Non-GMO grape seed oil is polyunsaturated fatty acid oil rich in plant sterols. It is very light and penetrating with a wonderful aroma. This oil is well suited for skin and hair care products. Sunflower seed oil, cold press. Sunflower seed oils of the, differs from mass-produced sunflower oils which are extracted using damaging heat and chemicals. Cold pressing preserves the sunflower oil, natural antioxidant activities, and other nutrients. Sunflower seeds also has a higher vitamin E content than most other vegetable oil. This soil also has a high level of unsaturated fat. It's very light and useful when added to beeswax or skincare based oil. Now, you can also cook with these oils, which are excellent. A little bit different than the filter ones. Canola oil comes from the rapeseed. It is light and odorless, with grape penetrating powder. 
power. This is one that you want to use if you're doing a massage and you want the essential oils to penetrate. It is recommended for massage blends and it's mixed with other oils to achieve different effects. So if you mix this with, uh, let's say, avocado oil, which is a little heavier oil, uh, you will not be penetrating so much and so forth. You can adjust uh, the penetrating into the skin by adjusting the base of the oils that you're combining together. Now, carrot seed oil is, highly, uh, is a highly value for skin care. It's used in complexion cream to nourish, tighten, revitalize, and refresh the appearance of skin. It improves skin tone, elasticity, and general skin health. It contains vitamin A, E, and beta carotene, which is known to protect skin from radiation damage. In addition, carrot seed oil has high antioxidant properties. Now, this unfiltered vegetable oil is kind of pricey, but you don't. You have an option. You can use the carrot seed vegetable oil, or you can add a few drops of carrot seed essential oil uh, to any combination of vegetable oils that you put together and you still have the same properties. Then we have aloe vera gel, which is a gentle moisturizer that can be used even by people with sensitive skin. The aloe gel we use is made with emollient organic aloe juice, eumectin vegetable glycerin, and wish hazel distillate as an astringent. Aloe Jelly can be applied to the face to max uh, to maximize hydration and to lock in moisture. It is considered one of the best to nourish and penetrate the skin. An excellent base delivery method for any product requiring its property. We use it for um, the muscle ache synergy by mixing it in the aloe vera gel. Uh, we're able to create a product that uh, it goes a longer way for uh, larger areas uh, of application. Um, we can also use it as a hair gel, which makes an excellent hair gel because it dries, uh, but it doesn't flake. Uh, if you view the Blending Lab videos, uh, you will find additional uses for the aloe vera gel. Then we have the Soy Lotion Cream. Another excellent one is a natural moisturizer. So it's, uh, we can make a, a leave-on conditioner that actually repairs the hair. You, you will see it. The isoflavones, the uh, genistein and the scene, uh, saponin and the natural vitamin E in soy, primarily in the genistein and the steen, have been well researched by scientists for their antioxidant and phytoestrogenic properties. The phytoestrogens naturally present in soy lipids are beneficial for the regeneration of skin and they help keep women looking, and men, looking useful as they increase the level of female hormones in the skin. We men and women have both hormones. Soy lipids are high in lecithin and phosphatidyl chlorine, which is instrumental in skin repair and regeneration. The antioxidants in soy lipids are also helping eliminating free oxygen radicals that can lead to skin damage and skin cancer. So uh, this is an excellent for uh, to make an all body type uh, moisturizer also uh, with lavender, with myrrh, uh, with carrot seed essential oils. Um, soy lipids also allow for rapid hydration and cell regeneration. Soy lotion is excellent in skin and hair care products as seen in our blending lab videos. It can also be used for animals, for dogs, for cats that has dry skin. It is safe to use for babies, for children. Filter water. When you add essential oils to filter water, it becomes our floral water. You can also do that by making a tea. And cooling it and that becomes your floral water because you know, as you remember we extract the essential oil with water when we make tea that's the flavor of the tea so we can still use a tea uh, for a toner we can use this tea for direct application in the skin the floral waters are excellent methods for delivering the active ingredients which are the essential oil a spray bottle filled with filter water with the addition of a few drops of essential oils make it easy to disperse the oil in the air also we use this method for in-home diffusion, which is effective for dealing with sick building syndrome, for use in sick rooms, for insecticide, cleaning products, and more. 
milk and magnesia. It's the brand name to, uh, for magnesium hydroxide, a medication used to treat constipation. This is an alkaline suspension that can undergo a, a neutralizing reaction when it comes in contact with anything acidic. Apply milk and magnesia directly to the underarms as a replacement for the toxic chemical in underarm deodorant. It can be blended with lavender, bergamot, or cedarwood atlas for an aromatic mix or used by itself. This is an important one that we recommend uh, to anyone since um, we don't want to put three known carcinogens in the lymph nodes under the arm, uh, which goes to the upper area of your breast, which happens to be where the tumors form. So this is the first thing that we recommend to anyone who comes to us for consultation. Now let's go ahead and figure cost, markup, and profits. The information below will assist you in determining the cost of your blends and synergies in product development. It is advisable that you purchase a good quality scale. We recommend one that has a tear button, which allows you to weight the empty container separately from the contents. Measurement conversions chart. One dram equals an eighth of an ounce, which equals 128 drops. Those are the little bottles that we work with. Two drams, it's a quarter of an ounce, it's 256 drops. Four drams is a half an ounce, which is 512 drops. And eight drams is an ounce, which is uh, roughly, depending on the size of the dropper, of course, 1,024 drops. Now, this gives us an idea of how many times a person, uh, or how long it will last for them to use the eighth of an ounce example, which we use the most. So, somebody that uh, we recommend um, a bath with, uh, let's say, the de-stress blend or the muscle ache blend or just lavender, and we recommend 10 drops in a bath, we can see that by dividing 10 into 120 drops, they can actually have 12 baths, 12 and a half baths, um, or a little more. So, we can give them a general idea on how long the, the little bottle or what size do they need for the recommendations that were given them by the use of the drops. Somebody who has a headache blend who used um, one or two drops anytime they have a headache, well, you can see that the eighth of an ounce will last them for a long time, many months, and it does. So that's the conversion chart, and that will help us with that. Now, in determining the cost of an eighth of an ounce, an ounce of a synergy that is formulated using three essential oils, we're going to go ahead and take a break right now because as we get into figuring out the cost, it's going to be a little complicated. We're going to spend a little time on it. So we're going to go ahead and conclude audio tape uh, number one from level three and come back uh, and uh, begin with determining the cost of an eighth of an ounce and the rest of the information. So stay there or tune in to audio tape number two for a continuance of this information of level three.